The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. And I got Lou from Fairfield, Connecticut, man. How you doing, Lou? I'm doing good, Daryl. And I got to tell you, you're not just blowing hot air out there. I think the way you look at the market is terrific. You're a nice guy as far as over the TV. All the research you do, all the homework you do, I truly appreciate it. I appreciate the, your view of the market. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Call now. Toll free at one 927 6648 Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Daryl Martin. All righty, folks. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Right here on TFNN.com. Live inside the eSignal platform and broadcasting on your mobile phone at TFNN.MOBI. Let's check out where the markets are at right now. We got the S&P is up 10 and a half points right now. We got Russell up five. We got the NASDAQ up 32, and the Dow is up 100, hitting those triple point swings again. Looking on over at Copper. Copper right now is up with over half a percent. We got gold down just a little bit, just down a few points on the day at the moment. Um, looking on over at Silver, we got Silver down about half a percent. We got oil is currently up about eight cents natural gas is up a little over one percent we got our ag markets right now we got corn up three and a half points doesn't sound like a lot but that is a one percent move in corn i'm looking on over at soybeans <coughs> pardon me soybeans <coughs> pardon me there folks all right let's check out uh soybeans it's up uh, one dollar we got pound dollars down 51 pips euro dollar is down 58 your pound is currently down 16. Dollar franc is up 56 pips on the day. The dollar yen is up one. Your yen is currently down 70 pips. The Aussie yen is up 30. Dollar index currently up about half a percent on the day. And then looking on over at the bonds, pretty flat right now in the 30 years. All right, well, that gets you caught up with your lunchtime market wrap. And next thing we got to do is we're going to go in. We're going to, you know, we got to well, let me go, go over the whole schedule today for the show. Uh, the main thing that I want to cover is get you ready. For the news, we're always talking about the news, always giving you the stats on the news. And, uh, again, there's a lot of ways to use the news. But i got to remind you, okay, very important, because we are less than 24 hours, okay, from the registration deadline. So there's less than 24 hours, less than a day to register so go ahead and hop on over right now while you're listening. Hop on over right now to TFNN.com. Click on the big virtual trading competition banner you see right here and fill in your first name, your last name, your phone number, and your email address and click submit. Okay? That will get you going. You want to do this right away. Get this done. If you're in the U.S. or Canada, uh, make sure you do this right away. Okay? And... Uh, I was able to verify that we're able to use the uh, scanner on the competition as well, so that's good news. But uh, make sure, again, you hop in, and I called Nadex up and asked to hop in and make sure you register for that right away. And um, they'll go ahead, and as soon as you do that, hop back over to the homepage and make sure you register for the you know free trial access there to the scanner. That'll last well past the uh, competition, and you get used to it. You're going to get access immediately to some basic education that's really going to help you out a lot. Uh, when you're, you know, learning to trade on Nadex, you don't want to learn on day one of the competition. It's not that that's bad, but why wait, right? So get in there, learn some stuff now, see what you can do, okay? And uh, you can get a free demo account. Just hop on over again to tfn.com, click on the Nadex banner on the right side of the page. From there, what you're going to do is you're going to clip on Trading Demo Trading Account. And if you're in the U.S., U.S. territories, Canada, or Mexico, you can go ahead and open your demo trading account. Fill in your username, first name, last name, phone number, and email address. Click Apply for Demo. And you'll get an email right away. You'll be able to log in. You just go over here. You'll choose Demo Account. You'll type in whatever it is you uh, chose to be your demo username. I do recommend you make it shorter than mine because it gives it an issue on the app. But uh, I usually log in on live on my app at this point. But 
You can go in, you log right in. You'll have $25,000 of funny money in there that you can play with, experiment with. And that's a good, like, starter for you to learn this week, okay? So get in there and just get familiar with it. Start hitting buttons. Start making mistakes. Start just getting all around. Now, if you register now, you're going to get access to a webinar that Tommy O'Brien's going to be doing as well. He's going to walk you through a lot of this and uh, help you get a head start on it. Um, so make sure you do go ahead and do that. Now, once you're ready, you know, the idea is to get you in here, get you going, help you understand how it works, uh, let you have some fun, let you make some money without any risk. And then, of course, also to, you know, ideally open an account. So, uh, you know, when you're ready, hop on over to nadex.com there from the link. Um, I'll tee up it in and click on open an account. It literally just takes a couple minutes. Just fill in your information right here. And, uh, you know, now they got all the regions and everything else. It's like they're adding a bunch of stuff, but uh, which is good. But just fill in your information and get that done. And in about five minutes, you can have your account open and actually potentially funded in as little as five minutes. Okay. Um, sometimes it takes longer, but most of the time it's pretty fast. And uh, that's really just your natural progression. Now, if you haven't been inside the scanner, let me show you what is in here and how this works. Okay. You hop on in, and when you log in, then you'll, you know, you'll see your login, of course. You go to the home page over here, and there is a video title section. Okay. So watch each step getting started tutorials first thing. So basically this one's just a tutorial that tells you how to get started, okay? Uh, and it tells you exactly how they work and all that fun stuff. So very, very simple. Step two, you know, watch tutorial trading using the help desk for any questions you have, okay? And then step three, use the box spread scanner and now the binary scanner and use the deviation levels uh, when you're trading futures, forex, and nadex. So you got your tutorials up here. Getting started. You got step by step basics. You got who is Nadex. You got the you know the spread master series, the binary master series. You got archives of my shows right here where we go through stuff. Okay, so just get in there, and knock that out, so you get a lot of the basics out of the way. Uh, and then you know we post the deviation levels as well. So if you go right here, you can view all of them. Okay, and we actually update them every day at eight fifteen. The settlement price is based on the settlement price of that market. What is the settlement price? Well, I talk about that a little bit over here on the deviation levels. Um, say for the CME, a market closes at 415, like the S&P. What they do is they take all the trades. The CME takes all the trades in the last 30 seconds. And they take every price that the market was traded at in the last 30 seconds. They then multiply that times the volume, the number of contracts traded at that price in the last 30 seconds, okay? So, for example, I have a 1,400 times 7,000 volume, be 9.8 million. That's the weighted value of that price because that's how many times a contract was bought or sold at that price. They add all those weighted values up, and they divide it by the total volume of all the contracts at every price that were traded. So there's 26,500 contracts traded in the last 30 seconds in this example, so 26,500 divided by 37,108,800 is 1,400.25. So that's how the CME comes up with the settlement price. That's an important number. It basically stands for the market consensus of what the S&P E-mini was worth as of 415 where everybody agreed. It's where they're going to do determine um, expiration value for in-the-money exercise on options. It's how mark-to-market -market accounting is going to be done in trading accounts, hedge accounts, uh, there's a lot of things like this where there's like a, a deadline, a date, like for swaps and all this other stuff that can definitely have an impact on the market. So right there, um, that's how settlement comes up. Well, that's the number we use. We pull that number from the CME and ICE and everybody else, and uh, we go in, we post those prices on the deviation page. And now, okay, so we got a settlement. That, that number makes sense. That's easy. Where do we get this deviation? Where do all these numbers come from? Well, what they are is we go in and we pull the expected movement, which a big fancy term is implied volatility, but the expected movement that's built into the price of an option. You know, and uh, the example I've used a hundred times before, but uh, you know, if you're in a car and you're driving it, and or if, if you're going to be, let me put it a different way, if you're the insurer and you're insuring a you know forty year old female who has a perfect driving record compared to a 16-year-old that just started driving or maybe had a wreck or two. Let's put it like they've already had one wreck and they're on their second car or something. 
Who are you going to charge more insurance to? Who do you think has more possibility of being a little more volatile, moving a little bit more than they should maybe on the road? Obviously, the 16-year-old who has the wreck. So especially if it's, you know, a boy, right? Because we're nuts when we, you know, are 16, we get our first car and everything else. So they pay more in premium. That's an expected movement. Expect, like, how much risk is involved in insuring this person? Well, that's actually in an option price. So, for example, let me show you something I haven't done too many times before, but I'll show you this. We'll go in, and we'll look up. Uh, let's see if I have anything on the Analyze tab over here. Okay, yeah, let me get rid of all these. And we're going to go in and sort of show you a way that uh, this is – Expected to play out. We'll go in. We'll look at the um, analyze, and maybe we'll actually go. I'm trying to figure out the best tool for displaying this. I don't want to go there yet. Uh, this is Thinkorswim. Has a lot of cool tools on it. If you haven't used it before, and um, let's see, where do they add the back? Okay, simulated trades. That's just going to be the analyzer. They have the. Um, one of the items I used to have on here, I'm just trying to figure out where it is now because they are always changing things around because they keep adding more and more and more cool features to it. But, um, yeah, okay, I'll just show it to you on a normal one. But uh, if we go into Apple, okay, and we're looking at it over here. Let me shrink this side if it'll let me. Let's see, you bring that in, that in, that in. Yeah, that ain't helping any. Okay, but I want to bring everything over to analyze, so I don't want to get rid of it all yet. And um, so we go down, and we go, okay, let's look at, we got, you know, nine days until this contract expires. So let's look at a straddle, okay? Uh, actually, let's look at a strangle. Let's see if I'm better. It'll be the exact, uh, no, we're going to do a straddle. We want the same strike. So um, where did that go? I just had it. All right, straddle. And let's just say we're going to buy a straddle, okay? And then I'm going to go in. I'm going to analyze this. So let's do analyze duplicate trade. Uh, no, we don't need that. I need to see the risk profile. There we go. That's what I was wanting. Okay. And uh, that's looking at the market being basically right where it is. I just want to double check. That's where we are. We're right at 101. 102 really actually would be a better one. So let's delete those off. Let's do 102 because the market's at 101.96. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, we go into the risk profile. And we'll add these on. I may have to do this when we come back just so I can pull it up for you. But uh, let me move this over. Pull it out. And then we'll go into a probability. There we go. Probability analysis. And then we'll go into think back. Think back is what I was looking for. They just moved the tab. So we come back. I'll do it one more time. I'm going to do it looking backwards to show you how accurate this is. Okay? Sorry it took me a second there. It's been a little bit since I've used it for this function, but we'll do it right when we get back. Stay there. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFN. N.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Daryl, take your phone calls <laughs> now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. I got up here is I have the uh, Bigger Swim Analyze tab. Let me pull that out and if it'll work for me for its own window here. And uh, we can pull up Apple, Google, whatever. I was just running through multiple scenarios. The closer you get to expiration, the more accurate it will be. Okay? But here's the idea. We go back and let's say we go back um, to the, let's see, today's the 24th. We go back to the 15th. Okay? And so we're going to look for trades that expire. Let's see. Turn to final. We got the 14th ones. Let's go back one more week on it. So we'll go like one more week here. We'll go to the 8th. Okay, so now we have September 14th uh, contracts um, that are coming up. And what we do is we go and we look at that contract, okay? And uh, then we look for a straddle. So now this is really making it a lot simpler than it is, but I'm just trying to show you the concept, the idea. And when we do that, we go in and go, okay, well, what if we bought that straddle? That straddle is basically cost $4. At 98 bucks, that means the expectation is by, if we go down to the expiration date here, we'll go to the, you know, basically the 14th. Um, what would be, you know, the net yield on the trade? Would it be good? Would it be bad? Um, and so we got to go – let's go into the actual expiration date and go, where were we at? What was the high? And this is the important number. What was the high? Because you don't want to hold an option to expiration. I don't care if you're doing binaries, spreads, whatever. Um, 
So I've seen some really good studies on proving how bad of an idea that is. I've done a few myself. So if we go in and 98.36 is where the market's trading, we bought a $98 straddle for $4.24. That basically is saying the expected move, okay, is 102.60. Now it may go more than the expected move, especially when you have, you know, certain big news events coming out, like we're launching a new iPhone or whatever, okay? But the expected move was 102.60. And then we go, okay, well, what was, if we go, you know, another expected move, that'd be basically another four bucks. And this is just a very simple way to try to say what they're trying to do is price a straddle, a, a fairly priced straddle is what the expected move should the market go up or down to where you'd be break even on the trade. Okay. Um, if it hit that expected move. So if it moved up four bucks, you know, in 20 cents, you should be about break even on the trade. And that's really how far it's expected to move. It's not expected to move eight, nine, ten dollars. So in this case, we're looking at getting in on September what eighth? We said, okay. So right over here, and uh, when there's high IV because of you know events coming out. But we'll go here. Let's just look at it. September eighth. So we got ninety eight dollars thirty six cents expected move. Is it'll go up to one o two sixty? I believe is what we said. So now we just move it on up. Let's go. How high? Did we go? And we got a high of 103.05 between the release and the expiration of the option. So pretty on target. So, I mean, just, you know, like right there, you got the high of this day's 102.20. And then, of course, when it rolls over to the, I mean, it's expired because when it rolls over, but when it rolls on over, then you got 102.81 as a high. But uh, so right there within just a few cents. We can go back. We can do the same thing on, let's do Google. Okay. And, again, if you would have held it, it would have came back. You would have lost everything. That's why you don't hold when you're doing this. Um, all right, so let's go back. Let's look at – let's find – okay, so we got um, the eighth. We got four days left. We do a straddle. The market's at 589. Let's see how close we get. We got 590. That's pretty close. Okay. So we got a straddle right there, 8 bucks. 8 bucks plus 589. So just pull out your handy calculator. So 589.72 plus – Eight dollars and ten cents, five ninety-seven eighty-two. Again, this is a very crude method, but it does show that there is an actual rationale in the options. So uh, either up to five ninety-seven. Well, it didn't go up, so let's go ahead and just ignore that. And now let's go in and take. Uh, let's go the other way because we know it went down. And let's look at five eighty-nine point seventy-two minus eight dollars and ten cents, down to five eighty-one sixty-two. So that's basically the one deviation expected move built into the price of the straddle. How low did it go? And so if we track it, we got five. We got some pretty low numbers up there. We got 580. It busted through down to 5, what, 76, but it pulled back up, closed at 583. Right here, we got a busted down, closed up at 581.35. And on the final day, it actually pushed right through it. It uh, had a high of 581.64, but it ran on down a little bit more. On the 12th down to 574. But for most of the days, we were right to that expectation. That 581 would have been that safe place where you would have wanted to take that profit. And uh, probably would have been one of the wisest places. So anyway, stay right there. We'll be back after this break. I just want to really drill home this point of expected movement being built into options. And let's make it easier. Stay right there. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So just showing you an example of uh, what we're doing is we're going through and talking about how options basically are the poll of all traders where they're putting their money where their mouth is on their vote and how far they expect the market to move. And this gives you a very realistic expectation. Most of the time, the market actually will move a deviation or more, okay? Uh, but you don't want to have this, like, dream that it's going to go forever. You want to know, where do I need to take profit on this thing? You know, you know, at a certain point, I'm, I may risk giving it all back like that. This Google trade, you would have made a little bit more if you held. Not that much more, but a little bit more. On the Apple trade, you would have gave it all back if you held. Okay? So it's really important that you have proper expectations. I don't care if you're trading stocks or futures or Forex or CFDs or forwards or spreads on Nadex or binaries on Nadex or whatever it is you're trading. You need proper expectations of how long it's going to take for a market to move a certain distance. Options help you do that, even if you don't trade options, okay? All the more important if you do trade options because of the time value that can really, you know, knock you upside the head. And so you see, okay, a move down to 581.62 is expected. It comes on down there. And so, you know, we can go over here and we can walk through. And see what would have happened on this uh, trade. I mean, it had a massive move right there at first. And uh, that seems a little odd, but then it keeps going. I think that was a misprint. But it uh, keeps going. And, you know, basically at 12560 was the max profit on that trade. Not a bad trade. 
And so you can go back and you can look at, you know, different prints on it and see how it moves. But that's really important that you understand that movement. We go over, we do the same thing on Microsoft. You know, you can pull up anything that has options on it, okay? Exchange-based options, really. You don't want to get OTC options if you can avoid it. So here's uh, September 8th on Microsoft. We got uh, 72 cents as an expected movement there, okay? Uh, 46, 40, that's between the 8th and the expiration, which is going to be on the 14th. So if we go in, let's pull up a handy little calculator, and, and um, I can do all this in my head, but why waste the brain power when you can use it on other things? We'll go on over here. We can, let's see, Microsoft went up, obviously. So we can go ahead and add 70 cents. The expectation is it'll move basically to 47.17 by expiration. We go in, we zoom in on this trade, specifically on where uh, it was going to expire out at. So we got in on the 8th. Okay, and we said it would go up to, let me bring that back up, 47.17. Okay, is the target price between the 8th on the upside, on the 8th and the, what, the 14th. So 8th, we got 40, uh, 46.97, 46.94, So we're 17 cents away, and then it, uh, it actually comes on back down. Okay. And this is why, we, again, we often take profits. But we're 17 cents away from taking our profit. Uh, that was the proper expectation. Expecting it to go a whole lot more than that was not a realistic expectation. So it'll get close. Sometimes it'll blow through it. But it'll be right around, and the majority of the time, 70% or more of the time, it'll be right around that. Every once in a while, I'd say like 5 or 10% of the time, it'll be under it. Most of the time, it'll be over it if it goes to it, Okay. But uh, if it, you know, for that other 30% of the time. So like 25% of the time over it, 5% of the time under it. But it all depends on the market, what you're looking at, everything else. There's a lot of little variables. But the bottom line is the majority of the time, and that's what trading's about. It's about probabilities, okay? The majority of the time, that's how far, that's really as far as you should expect the market to move. By knowing that, you can save yourself a lot of trouble. So as the market moves forward, we watch the P&L. You know, and do we hold it all the way through? No, we got really close. Now, this is not including the highs. This is closing the close. But, I mean, was there enough room in the expectations to make money? What I look for is if there's enough room in the expectation to actually make a nice profit. Okay? Now, we take all that information. Now, this is on, like, four days or 18 days or 30 days. Or, you know, and the further out you go, the less accurate it gets because, you know, it's, it's easier to predict what's going to happen in the next five minutes, five hours, five days than it is in the next five months. Um, as far as this price action is concerned, at least in my in my humble opinion, okay? So I can tell you target prices over long periods of time. But as far as, you know, up or down and all that stuff and distance, it, it becomes a lot easier to do the shorter time frame. So what I do is I take the same formula that's being used to price the options, and I turn it inside out. Um, I grab that implied volatility out. I grab a deviation um, move out. And I turn it into a one-day move, and that gives me daily deviations. Like as in, instead of saying, you know, we said like 14, you know, 70 cents on Microsoft. I'm saying, okay, $18 on S&P today is the expected move. Doesn't mean it's going to move that far, but that is the expected move built into the price of the options. There's been a lot of volatility lately, okay? And that's high to low, and that's really important to remember. This is a high to low. Sometimes it'll go down 9 and then up 18, and you know, on around the list. Uh, we got 14 bucks, and you can sort of see, you know, the different markets that we're listing here. We got the small cap. We got U.S. tech. We got Wall Street, oil, natural gas, copper, gold, silver, corn, soybeans. We got, you know, a variety of FX pairs, so like 18 FX pairs or more. Um, I got, you know, ESNQ, TFYM, CLGC, you know, HGSI, ZCZS, 6A, B, C, E, J, and S. So we have a variety of markets you can use this on, futures or forex traders. By having this, it'll help you out just a ton um, and knowing what your proper expectation should be for if it moves this far. Um, let's see here. Let me pull up something right here. It's uh, have a little bit of a hard time, but I'll, I'll just go through and open the chart up for you. Here we go. And we'll go through. We'll look at some of these. So we got oil right now. It's, uh, it's pushed up to 90% of its deviation level between the high to the low. Okay, see how it ran up to 0.5? It pulled on back down. Uh, we go over, we can look at, and you know, expect after yesterday we'll have a little bit lighter moves, but just looking at everything, 
and seeing what those deviations are. If we go back day after day after day, you see that you know they hit them a majority of the time. But uh, let's load up oil. Let's check that out. And let's look here. So we got this is moving on up. It's about 85% right now of the expected move on the S&P. Um, it's basically saying that uh, there's an expectation that 30% of the time it will not surpass, in this case, you know, 1991 probably. And we went down a little bit under 1972. We went down to 1970.5. So you're going to subtract a couple points off that. Basically, we're working at 1989 as the high to low target on ES. Okay? And that's if we hit a full deviation today. Um, we can go in, we can look at all the markets one at a time, and you can see day after day how they do it. We can go backwards. There's yesterday out of ESCL, it came right down to a one deviation move. And um, day before we can look at it, came right down to one deviation move and just went flat. And so we can do this again and again and again and to see, did it help us hit the proper expectations? This one, um, it went up and then came back down the high to low, which is what I'm measuring down here, the high to low. We hit a one deviation move again the day before that. Uh, we go the day before that. We look at it. It went right up to, right at the end there, right up to a well, one deviation move. So get it again. We're seeing that it's hitting a one deviation move within a, basically a 24-hour period. I'm using the settlement price, but I'm using the IV from 8.15. So I, basically what I do is I let the market close. I let the market open. I let the options trade a little bit to get some you know, liquidity back in the market. And then at 8.15 at night, I pull the implied volatility out and post the levels up. So having expected movements lets you know, again, don't add into positions. Normally, whenever you're getting to a one deviation move, high to low, or one deviation above settlement, one deviation below settlement, you know, tighten your stops if you're already in. Potentially look for, I'm not saying take, but look for a reversal trade. Get some sort of reversal signal before you just take it because... Every once in a while, it was blow through those deviation levels. And that's why we have two and three deviations plotted also for that you know, remaining 30%. But most of the time, we expect it to go to a uh, deviation. And it, it just, it's, not, um, it's not a pivot point. It's not a FIB level. You know, it's not based on any past market price action. The closest market price action you could say would be settlement. Okay. And um, really, it's not even based on settlement because we're counting a deviation from high to low regardless of settlement. So if it you know, moves 18 points from the low to the high, it moved the deviation move, okay, no matter where settlement was in that mix. So we're really not, like, in any way using historical pricing, historical volume, historical anything. We're using live, current, implied volatility of where market participants say the market's going to go next – over the next 24-hour period from 8 p.m. to 8 p.m., and that is the number that matters um, for determining that expected movement. And most traders, you know, they have technical analysis, and some of them have fundamental analysis. You know, we talk about the news a lot in here. That's the fundamentals, right? Um, and But the biggest piece that they're usually missing, you know, we talk about technicals. We talk about fundamentals. Some traders have seasonal analysis. Uh, which is a little more challenging, but very powerful, uh, as long as the government's not messing up all the seasonalities. But the one thing I rarely see a trader have is the statistical analysis. And those are the four fundamental, the four pieces of diagnostic trading. Fundamental analysis, see, which is government news, news reports, etc. Seasonal analysis, which is cycles. And uh, you'll see me every once in a while pull up seasonalities on the VIX and things like that. And then, again, technical analysis, volume, price action, indicators, et cetera, anything on a chart. And then the last piece being statistical analysis. But often when I see it, I'll see historical statistics like what you call standard deviation, the bell curve. That's past. That doesn't tell me anything about the future. Think about every disclaimer you ever read. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. Okay? So looking at the past doesn't really help you in the future. I want to know, what does everybody who has money on the line right now think about how far the market's going to go? Because you don't really want to fight the market, okay? Doesn't mean I'm not contrarian to price action or whatever, but I'm talking about as far as algorithms are using this. They, algorithm, the, the big algos, the big funds, you think they don't know the statistics on how far a market will move? You think that maybe is why when we hit a deviation, we see a big volume spike? And they're dumping off shares, Okay. So very, very important levels and will really help you in your trade. It gives you a true perspective 
on how far has the market moved, can it keep going, or is it done? And then along the way, what I have found is that the deviation levels themselves serve usually, honestly, as great support or resistance levels. So a lot of times we'll see them bounce between those levels as well. I used to just plot one deviation, and I expanded it out to two and three for those days that it does go further. And we, I mean, I barely ever have seen it pass a three. And uh, that's that's really a one-off event. I mean, I, I think I've maybe seen it two or three times in the past couple of years. Um, and then, you know, the last piece is, you know, just using those as areas to trail your stops. And one thing, I, a system I've taught before was the 10-minute, you know, trading method. I went in basically it's just really simple, but it's using 10 minutes to determine direction. I use 10 minutes with deviation levels. And I'll go in. And I'll wait for it to close above, you know, and hit a price. So it closes above, it hits a stop here. Okay, we're going long. When I see the market close above a deviation level again, I'm going to trail my – or touch a deviation level. I'm going to trail my stop at five ticks below the low of the bar. Touches another deviation, I'll trail it again. So and you can see that, I mean, I could have had a nice trade basically going from here all the way to here just on using 10-minute bars on deviation levels. I can add in things like MVP to help out with that. I can add in things like expected volume to help out with that. But ultimately, I can just look at price action with deviation levels on them, and I can trade just that. Uh, so it's just one more play in the playbook. It's also a good way to look at the market. And get, if you see the market closing higher than a deviation level, then that usually is the direction you're going. Okay, Trailing your stop five ticks behind that bar. Every time it touches another deviation level or zone there, trail it five more ticks. If it closes a Below and above a level again, then you can trail it again. But basically, just trolling it, trolling it, trolling it at each deviation move. And whether it be a 0.5, a 0.7, a 1, a 1.5, whatever. And um, it can sort of give you a trend um, view of the market in and of itself. So that's probably one of the simplest methods for day trading that I can give you right there. Um, and let's see, I can add on something like an MVP with it if I want to you know, add on like a, some sort of indicator, give a confirmation. But uh, you know, really not even needed on this simple system. So, but it's just you know, it's combining a couple things together. Let's see here. All right, we got it. And okay, so this actually would have got us in sooner than MVP, right there. It would have got us in as soon as it broke the high of this. Would have went long, and then we could be trailing. You could trail with the MVP line. You could trail with the predictor there. It's a little bit closer. MVP being momentum volatility predictor. So that's momentum line, and it's basically a volatile line with a predictor arrow. So it's sort of a, a modified SAR, um, and uh, something you can use as a trailing stop, or you could have got out as soon as it touched up here. So if you're like, you know what, I think there's still some room to go up to one deviation, you might just go ahead and follow the predictor and see if you can, you know, squeeze a bit more out of it. And uh, that's your choice if you want to risk, you know, giving back four or five more points or not. So. But I'm uh, just using that 10-minute direction with the expected movements, and we'll see you know major turns and oscillations at those movements. There's also a great scalping area. You'll notice 0 0.5, 0 0.7. See how it's just bouncing in between there? You could be scalping in and out of S&P like for a, a huge chunk of the time. You could throw on some spreads to hedge your scalps and just start scalping over and over and over again. Lots of cool ways to trade, combining futures and Nadex. That's actually my favorite way to trade. But uh, anyway, so stay right there. We'll be back right after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. We've just been going over how to uh, basically know how far any market will move over uh, any time frame and how we help you out with that uh, on a one-day move and using forward expectations of market participants, not backwards actions of previous order flow. Um, let's see here, going in and looking at maybe a couple more things, but uh, that's pretty much the main things I want to go into with you today. Uh, the other things I want to go over with you is just to make sure you're caught up for any um, news that you need to have on your list. And so let's look at that real quick. Let me pull it up. We'll throw up, uh, you know, Forks Factory. That's just one of many easy sites to look at. We had the new home sales this morning. But also, uh, what else do we got going on for the rest of the day or tomorrow? Um, okay, so we got uh, tomorrow we're going to have a variety of U.S. releases coming out. Looking at an 8 a.m. entry for a 10 a.m. expiration for a $25 minimum profit on an iron condor. This is based on uh, the euro dollar. And it's based on the core durable good orders and durable good orders. Uh, and let's see, so that will come out. We'll also have unemployment claims come out, which means make sure you're watching out for Spike Striker, um, as well as volume spikes that happen, maybe give you some reversal trades. we got wiki, uh, wiki, <laughs> weekly natural gas um, inventory uh, coming out. So uh, also we can look at some you know, volume spikes, Spike Striker reversal trades there, 1030 to 1130 when they come out um, tomorrow night. 7.30 to 8.30 Eastern Time. We're going to have uh, Tokyo Core CPI, National CPI, happening at 7.30. That can definitely have an impact on the yen and uh, maybe a little bit on the Aussie as well. 
but uh, just be very aware of that event. Uh, tonight, uh, if you're trading the Aussie, we got the RBA governor talking at 10.30. Governor Stevens is going to be talking. And uh, might be some volume spikes that occur when that comes on out. Those are going to be your main trades. Uh, we had oil inventory. We can go in and we can look at that real quick. Let me pull it up. I think we had an oil chart earlier. Let me pull up the oil trade, see how that came on out. And um, get that done. When that loads on up, we'll walk through that trade and see if there's anything else. But that really is going to be uh, the main trades on the week. All right, so going over. And let me throw on the spikes here. There we go. All right, I want to add one more thing so I have that volume spike uh, analysis built in. And with that loaded, eventually, as it comes up. <laughs> um, all right, so we did have some volume spikes to go short. We did get a short right there. You see how that triggered, flew down, and um, right off the expected move as well, right there, like right at the very end in the last 10 minutes, and uh, flew on down there on both 5 and 10 minutes, uh, both given uh, short volumes right there, along with the uh, you know, MVP staying short the entire time. But market moved up, hit the expectation on the hour, um, also hit the 0.5 deviation, as I mentioned earlier, that will often serve as a you know resistance or a support level. So it did. It popped up, hit the expectation, went a little bit further, right into the 0.5 deviation, turned right back around, Right on a volume spike, you can see that volume spike really clear on the 10-minute bars where you see the volume being twice that of the volume bars on the other side. Gives a reversal uh, based on price action to go short. It goes short, comes on down, and um, closes well in the money. And uh, so just a perfect sweet oil trade. Okay, so uh, that's your oil inventory report. Remember, you can do the same thing tomorrow on natural gas, okay? Um, let me see. I don't know if I have time. If I do, I'll open it up. If not, then we'll just have to cover it uh Next time, but let me uh, open it up over here, and if I can get it out and get it loaded fast enough, we have, uh, again, like I said, we have natural gas from, you know, coming out at 1030 tomorrow. So uh, I just wanted to go over a little bit more, but uh, we'll review it tomorrow with you. I hope you all have a great day and um, in the markets, and I will see you tomorrow here on the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Thank you. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You're watching Tiger TV.